Hello and welcome, this is Al from Open Source Channel. Welcome again to a new episode on how to Before we get started, I would like to thank all our subscribers. Don't forget you can follow me on uh, Twitter, Google Plus and Facebook. As you can see, I've reached 1,413 subscribers. Here is the Twitter page. And here you can find all the videos. Don't forget to like and share my videos. The more you like and share, the more videos I can do. Anyway, let's get started. Today we're going to show you how to create an hardware ad blocking using Raspberry Pi and a very easy installation. All you need is just a line that I'm going to show you. In fact, you can find the actual line as you can see here, curl l install by all.net bash. Anyway, without any delays, let's get started. Don't forget to visit pine-all.net for help if you need any now let's start the installation now the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to create the SD card for my Raspberry Pi the first thing I'm going to do is to format the card And I'm going to use a program called SD Formatter. Don't forget you can uh, follow my previous videos on how to get started on Raspberry Pi. Here we go, this is the SD Formatter. I'm going to choose the drive, in this case for me is G. I'm going to change the volume level. And we're going to click format and then OK. It won't take long. You can press OK again. I'm using a uh, 32 gig SD mini SD card. I'm going to press exit and I'm going to going to launch a program called Win32 Disk Imager to write image on the actual SD card. Let's see what it is. Hmm. If you bear with me, I can't remember where I put it. Here we go. I I think I'll remove it for one another tutorial. So anyway, I just installed it uh, quickly and uh, here we go, I'm going to start it. Now I'm going to make sure that I is on the drive G and I'm going to to my desktop and I'm going to load the ISO file. Once that is correct, I'm going to press, of course, double check your drive and I'm going to press right. Then I'm going to press yes to continue. I'm going to pause to, you know, to just speed up a little bit. Here we go, as you can see, it's already 98%, 99. And it looks like it's nearly finished now. Right, successful, I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to press Exit. Now we're going to launch my terminal using PuTTY and I'm going to start the installation of a Pi hole. I'm going to copy the line here on their website. Now I'm going to log in to my 
Raspberry Pi. Now, uh, I already set the IP of my Raspberry Pi in my router, so it's going nev you know, never going to change. It's always using the same IP. This is very important for this project. Now I'm going to log in using login Pi and the password Raspberry. This is the standard. So now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to... Uh, don't forget, again, if you need more information, you can follow this tutorial, Raspberry Pi 2, how to set up at first boot. Now going back to the terminal, I'm going to launch sudo raspy-config. This is the first install, uh, the first thing you do in configure your Raspberry Pi. You're going to extend the space on the SD card and I'm going to also change the memory split. Here we go, I just uh, done the partition and extended the SD card. Now I'm going to memory and I'm going to change 64 to 16. That's really what I need for this project. So I need more, now I'll have more memory and less on the video card. Now I'm going to reboot and press yes again. Here we go, that's been suspended, so I'm going to close it up and I'm going to open a new one, a new session on Puri, while the Raspberry is rebooting. Here we go, uh, again the IP, in this case, my case will be 192.168.192. Now make sure it's static because that's the actual IP you're going to use later on when you configure your connection your network connection so anyway now next thing i'm going to do i'm going to run an update and i'm going to write sudo apt-get update Now for the first time it's going to take quite a while, so I'm going to stop and restart. There we go. The update is finished. And as I said, all you need to do now is copy this line into your terminal and just press enter. Now there are a few configuration as you can see here. And all you need to do, just press OK, OK, and yes. You don't need to do anything else. Except when it's going to uh, tell you which card, in this case, which interface you want to use. In this case, I'm going to use ETH0, OK. And I'm going to use APV, IPV, sorry, 4. Here we go, that's the IP. And I'm going to press yes. So make sure you remember this IP. As I said earlier on, that's what you need later on to set up your network. Now I'm going to press OK. Yeah, it explains the reason why about the IP. Now we're going to choose Google or OpenDNS. For my uh, purpose, I'm going to use Google. And then press OK and that's it. Just sit back and enjoy. It won't take, it's going to take quite a while now. So, but that's it really. At the end of the day, there is no extra you know, information you need to input. Now we're going to uh, pause a little bit the video and speed up. Here we go, the actual installation is finished. Again, don't forget the IP. 
Now I'm going to run sudo apt-get upgrade. I'm going to press yes. I'm going to speed up again the video. There we go, the upgrade is done. Again, all the information you you know you can find in this help page from the pyall.net project. Here is how to set up the IP address, the static IP address. A sudo space vi. Um, I usually use nano as I'm going to show you now. And that's what you need to do. Sometimes within the installation, uh, you will find this information already there. But just in case you don't, what you can do, just copy and paste inside there and change the IP as you need it. Of course, make sure that the uh, static domain server is correct and the router as well, as you can see here my reflex my router once i am finished i'm going to press ctrl and x and exit as i said i use nano it's much easier for me i'm more used to it now what you need to do is restart your pi so i'm going to write sudo if you don't know how to do it this is sudo space reboot now the actual pi i have rebooted now as you can see when you go to the actual IP you won't find anything but if you type slash admin you will find a small HTML page here you will find some of the statistics and all there is is statistics is not, nothing else you can actually do except you want you know if you want to donate to the project I'm a little bit sorry about the voice today I'm a uh, I got a little cold, so hopefully it's understandable. Huh. Now what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to change the adapter IP4 IP. Uh, at the moment it's DHSCP and I'm going to change that to a static one. So. You can do IP4 also IP6 with this project. So I'm going to press properties and I'm going to use DNS server with the IP that I told you earlier on. As you can see also on the uh, URL bar 192.168.1.92. And I'm going to press, once finished, I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to close it. Now I'm going to show you uh, inside the folders of uh, Pi Hall. It's inside the ATC slash ATC, and I'm going back in. Type in CD uh, space Pi Hall now inside the actual folder. There are three files you need to you know to. Uh, let's I don't want to say worry about it, but those three important files. One is blacklist.txt. Another one is whitelist.txt and the other one is gravity.list now blacklist is very simple to understand if you want uh, domains that you want to block and whitelist are domains you want there to be not blocked and gravity you use gravity to make sure that those lists are updated so as you can see here I just updated with, with the actual server and I typed gravity.sh once it's done now I'm going to aol.com it will already direct .co.uk anyway but as you can see there are no ads because those ads are being removed already by the PyAll hardware Add remover 
Now if we're going back to the Ethernet and I'm going to do properties again and I'm going to do back to IPv4 and I'm going to choose update the DNS from the router. Press OK. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to refresh and as you can see here, now I'm going to block because I don't allow flash. So I'm going to block that. And as you can see here, there is the advert also here as well. You won't see the actual advert itself because I haven't blocked flash. But otherwise you would have seen the actual advert, the actual banner. Now if I'm going to refresh the page here, you can see the statistics. And already uh, has been blocked today. Uh, DNS securities and the percentage of traffic ads. And there are over 147,000 uh, domain, I think, that are known for uh, ads mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Don't forget to follow me again. Subscribe, please, so I can do more videos. And don't forget, you can uh, write any comments below. And here is a selection of my past tutorials. I'll see you again.